Martin Rees has spent his career tackling some of the biggest questions in science. When I was a student, the case for the Big Bang was only just becoming established. And what's happening now is another big step forward. People are starting to talk with a straight face about what happened when the universe was a trillionth of a trillionth of a, of a trillionth of a second old. He has played a key role in a generation of astrophysicists who have presided over the most profound revolution in our understanding of the universe since the Renaissance. I was very lucky because there was a big surge of new discoveries in the 1960s. What's been even more fortunate is that the surge has not abated in any way. And as the frontier advances, the periphery gets longer, we are aware of more things that we don't know. From the Big Bang, Reese's career has moved on to black holes, quasars, and truly mind-bending topics like dark matter and the multiverse. But it all started with a simple curiosity about the world around him. I was interested in mysteries of nature, even at an early age. I used to be taken on holidays to seaside, and I remember looking at the tide tables and wondering about why high and low tide were at different times in different places. And that was something that I only understood much later, that I was puzzled by it. And of course, in science, the good start is to be puzzled by natural things. Until the age of 13, he attended Bedstone, a school his parents founded in the English county of Shropshire. From there, he went to high school at Shrewsbury School, where he became interested in science for a rather unusual reason. When I went to high school, I studied science honestly because I was rather bad at languages and I avoided doing languages by doing science. That strategy apparently worked because he was accepted into Cambridge, beginning a lifelong association which continues to this day. I got my bachelor's degree mainly in mathematics, but I knew by then that I wasn't cut out to be a mathematician. I didn't like it very much, um, and I preferred to actually understand real phenomena, trying to make sense of the natural world. By a bit of luck, I got a graduate studentship in a department where there were people working on astronomy and cosmology. This was the mid-1960s, and I was quite lucky in that I was able to write the first papers on some new phenomena about quasars and about the Big Bang. Aided by new technology, Reese and his colleagues were formulating a new idea of the universe that seemed far more strange and magical than any science fiction. We gradually realized that in the centers of galaxies, there lurk black holes weighing as much as millions or even billions of stars. They also realized that the universe is largely composed of something we haven't even discovered yet. Dark matter is important in determining the structure of the universe. So far, we don't know what the dark matter is. Scientists can only detect its presence. But that's not the only riddle in the cosmos. There may be other big bangs, other universes. And this idea is commonly called the multiverse. That's right. There could be more than one universe. Reese has written more than 500 scientific papers on big ideas like these. But he's also been a prolific author of popular books to help explain them to the general public. The big questions, I think, can be explained in straightforward language so that people can understand them. Everyone throughout history has looked up at the same night sky and wondered about it. Indeed, science is the one truly global culture. The British public also knows him as the Astronomer Royal. That's him with the Queen. But that's just the beginning. I had the privilege of being president for five years of the Royal Society, which is the UK equivalent of the National Academy of Science in this country, which engages with government on all these issues where science and technology impinge on policy. Indeed, he should properly be addressed now as Baron Rees of Ludlow since he was elevated to the House of Lords in 2005. But Lord Rees sees it all as a platform for social engagement. We've got to be aware of issues like energy, climate change, genetics, etc., which have important policy and ethical implications. In 2011, he was awarded the Templeton Prize, given to an individual who affirms life's spiritual dimension. That caused a little controversy. 
but he doesn't see any contradiction. I'm not a religious person myself, but I think anyone who works in science shares with religious people a sense of mystery and wonder. For more than 40 years, he's been in the vanguard of a scientific revolution. It was an exciting time, and one bit of advice I'd give to young people thinking about science is always go into a subject where new things are happening. What you want to do is to have a chance to be the first person to tackle exciting new problems.